Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on discussing the roadmap to become a full stack web developer. Before starting the session, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. Now friends, becoming a full stack developer appears to be a difficult task, especially if you are new to the world of coding. In the beginning, you may believe that you have lot of learn in a short period of time. A list of tools to become a full stack web developer includes languages, framework, libraries and databases as well as anything else required. The simplest approach to get anything started on this project is to create a roadmap. A roadmap is the most effective approach to get started on your journey to become a full stack web developer. Your goal should be to learn the very minimum skill set necessary so that you can begin experimenting and honing what you have learned. Once you have learned the fundamentals, you may move on learning to the full stack technologies, which will offer you a great advantage over your competitors, rather than attempting to understand the entire web development expect from. Stick to the systematic approach and gradually equip yourself. So without further ado, let's check today's agenda. First, we are going to discuss about what is full stack web development. Then, we are going to discuss about scope of the full stack web development. Then. We are going to discuss from where to start. Then we are also going to discuss what to learn. Then we are going to discuss about choosing a tech stack. And at the end, we are going to discuss about some additional skills. So what is the full stack web development? Full stack web development refers to the creation of web application from front end, which is a client side and back end to the server side. Web developers who can design comprehensive web apps and websites are known as full stack web developers. They work on web applications or websites such as front end, back end, databases and debugging. Let's discuss the scope of full stack web development. According to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, there will be 8,53,000 of opening for full stack web developer positions by 2024. Due to the constant optimization of resource cost, the multi-dimensional job position will present you with a plethora of job opportunities. The year 2022 is thought to be the greatest starting career as a full stack web developer. Companies are searching for individuals that can understand all of an application levels and lead a project from start to finish. Now there's a question, from where do we start? Full stack development is a difficult endeavor and many newcomers may find it intimidating. The truth is, it would be a lot easier if you started focusing in either front end or back end and then learn about others as you went. That stated, if you have a hard to do, nothing will stop you from becoming a full stack web developer. But the question is, what to learn? To minimize the confusion or losing time, it is always a good idea to create a roadmap of what you should learn first. The following are some of the most important things a full stack web developer should know. For such as using a tech stack, the front end, the back end, the database, the version control. Now, let's discuss about choosing a particular tech stack. Every business adheres to its own technology stack. A full stack web developer's choice or stack is determined by his or her particular goals, expected application performance, company needs, and so on and so forth. So, some of the popular tech stack we are going to discuss today. The first one is Mern Stack. So, do you want to learn how to do a full stack development? Mern stands for MongoDB, ExpressJS, ReactJS, and Node.js. Basically, MongoDB is a NoSQL database that uses a binary JSON format to store data. If we talk about ExpressJS, Express is a Node.js backend web application framework for quickly and easily creating constructing online app. And if you talk about React, React is basically a JavaScript library for developing user interfaces. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime environment that runs on server. Now let's discuss about LAMP stack. The LAMP stack is an acronym for lightweight application. You can start with this old school tech stack, but don't get too comfortable with it. This stack's model foundation is Linux, an open source operating system. So, Apache is basically a web server that uses internet to deliver web content, one of the most widely used HTTP clients on the internet. And if you talk about MySQL, MySQL is an open source database that can be queried by scripting language to build a website. And if you talk about PHP, PHP is an open source server-side programming language. 
So LAMP stack stands for L for Linux, A for Apache, M for MySQL, and V for PHP. Let's discuss the another tech stack that's called mean stack. So suppose you want to create application that are dependable, then this one you should give a shot. M stands for MongoDB, which is kind of a no SQL database that uses the binary JSON format to store the data. And Express is a node.js backend framework that can easily and quickly create apps. Basically, these are all online apps. And Angular.js JS is a framework that uses HTML and TypeScript to create single page client apps. As a set of TypeScript libraries that you load on your projects, it implements fundamental and optional functionality. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime environment that runs on the server. When compared to Java or Python, JavaScript based tech stacks are comparatively entertaining and straightforward to learn if you are just getting started. Let's discuss about the backend frameworks. The backend is the code that runs on the server and handles the client requests, as well as the logic that determines what data should be returned to the client. The database, which is used to store all of the data for the application, is also the part of the backend. There are three aspects to the style of web development. A server is a computer that stores the data, kind of a database. Backend engineers write code that conveys data from database to the browser. You can consider at the end, it is a kind of a software program. Let's discuss about some of the backend frameworks. Developers need a backend framework so that the application can be created. It is the script side of a dynamic application. A lot of options are available for backend frameworks, such as Express.js is a Node.js framework for building web applications. It is a Node.js module. It's suitable for the server-based apps that wait for the client connection requests. Single page, multi-page, and hybrid web applications can all benefit from it. If we talk about Django, Django is a Python web framework with a model template view design. It's used to make complex database driven websites, which are kind of easier to make. It is quick and creates a neat appearance. If we talk about Ruby on Rails, it is also a server side web application framework built on the Ruby programming language. It provides default database, web servers, and web page structure. The architecture is kind of MVC, which is model view controller. Now, let's discuss about the front end. This is the client side portion of the website or the component that a user sees and interacts with it. For this aspect, a developer must be creative and original with the graphics and design. UI UX is difficult and important work on itself. Frameworks for the front end development. Using the framework to build your website using the front end provides a lot of benefits and it's also kind of very simple. These are files and directories that contain pre-written standardized code. Now, now, let's discuss about the first one that is AngularJS. This is a framework for creating dynamic web apps. Google and group of organization and individuals support JavaScript based open source web platform. If we talk about ReactJS, Facebook, the consortium of corporation as well as the individual developers maintain ReactJS which is a JavaScript based library. React is ideal for retrieving and recording rapidly changing the data. If we talk about Vue.js, it is also another open source JavaScript framework for single page app and user interfaces. It's small in size yet packs a bunch of terms in performance. It offers handpicked features from other frameworks like Angular and React, making it best alternatives for beginning coders. Now, Let's discuss about some of the CSS frameworks such as Bootstrap, a Twitter endeavor. Bootstrap is credited for popularizing responsive design on a large scale. It was the first framework to support mobile-first attitude. If we talk about Bulma, Bulma is relative new to the CSS framework, yet it has quickly established itself. Its appeal stems from rigorous CSS-only approach, which is no JavaScript components, and clever defaults, which many developers with a keen eye for the design find it difficult to work with when using Bootstrap. If we talk about Tailwind CSS, which is a utility-first CSS framework that allows you to quickly create and bespoke user interfaces. It's a highly configurable low-level CSS framework that gives you all building blocks that you need to create custom designs without having to fight and override any unpleasant opinionated styles. Now, let's discuss about the databases. Isn't it true that we need a database to store and retrieve data? Relational and non-relational databases such as SQL versus no SQL are the two types of databases. MySQL, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, Cassandra are the example of the databases that developers should be familiar with. Furthermore, familiarity with caching options such as Reddit, Memcached, and Vonish 
is a huge advantage. Several databases are available. MySQL, SQLite, Postgre, a relational database management system, which store data in a table-like structure. This is useful for keeping companies' information. These no SQL databases use SQL, such as MongoDB, Cassandra, Apache Storm, and Sphinx. The only thing that they have in common is that they don't use relational database design. This database type encompasses a wide range of technologies that can be used to locate key-value database, graph databases, streaming databases, and so on. Let's discuss about some of the version control. Before being developed and deployed, every product or application passes through a several versions and revisions. A version control is a system such as GitHub, which is kind of popular, or GitLab or Apache Subversion that should be learned to used. Git is an excellent alternative if you are looking for widely used modern version control system that fits your demands. It was designed by the same person who built the Linux operating system and it is actively maintained and open sourced. Now, these were the few of the things that we learned about choosing a particular tech stack and what were the frameworks involved such as backend, front end, version control and databases. And we also discussed some of the frameworks for the same. Now, at the end, if you learn some more additional skills, it will be very helpful. Now, let's discuss some of the additional skills. The secure shell protocol or SSH is used to perform network services over an unsecured network in a secure manner. SSH is a remote login protocol that allows allows you to connect from one computer to another. It protects data privacy and integrity. If we talk about HTTP, which is a hypertext transfer protocol, is a protocol that the internet uses. It specifies how messages are sent, what action web servers and browsers conduct in response to commands. The secure version of HTTP is HTTPS. Now, if we learn about some of the Linux command, it is also very useful. The line basics, although it is not mandatory that you possess this skill, it is good to know about Linux. It is not necessary easy or hard to learn. Linux makes the job easier and saves a lot of time by organizing items on the back end. If we talk about data structures and algorithm, it is also very helpful in clearing the interviews and also solve some problems. Data structures are different ways of basically storing data, while an algorithm is a generic approach methodology to solve problem or requirement. Every programmer needs to be familiar with these concepts. This is not the core skills, but it is easier if you learn these skills, it will be helpful to solve issues or add requirements. Thank you. That was all from our side. Hope you would have enjoyed today's session. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides PG program in web development offered by Bellhaven University. The course link of which is given in the description below.